It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back to Nightly Newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. Thursday evening, February 18th, 2016, wrapping up this third full week of the month of February. Hope you're having a great week with us so far. We have an exciting newsletter for you tonight. We're covering crude, S&P, gold, and euro. Starting out tonight, crude oil is bearish and trading at the lows of the channel this evening, which tells us to wait for rotation back up the channel highs before looking for the next round of selling opportunities tomorrow. Over on the E-mini, the S&P is also bearish. It's got a spike in channel and a trading range this evening, which tells us to look for bull traps up at the highs of the range and highs of the channel for the most reliable trades tomorrow. Over on gold, the yellow metal is bullish but considered way too expensive this evening for the buyers to want to buy after today's big move. So we expect to see a deep correction off the highs, which tells us the sellers to look for buyer failures on the way back to the correction zones we have waiting for you below. Gold's a pretty interesting scenario waiting for tomorrow. We may end up seeing that gold all the way back where it came from. More on that in a moment. The euro is bearish and coming off the highs of a channel this evening. We get a possible bear flag waiting to break down on the euro before the market completes rotation back to the low. This tells us to look for traps at the highs or lower lows after that bear flag sets up. Beautiful bear flag and a beautiful channel this week on the euro. Tough to tell where we go next. Got a good plan on the euro though for you guys. Be waiting for proof tomorrow morning. And before we get into charts tonight, I want to remind you the only place to find this full length newsletter video is right here on our trading blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. If you're watching the video on our YouTube channel, not to worry, there's a link in the description of the YouTube video that will take you over here to our trading blog so you can watch the full length version. While you're here on our trading blog, don't forget to grab a free pass to come out and test drive our live trade room as a guest for a day, maybe two or three days. Free pass in the upper left-hand corner. Lower left-hand corner, you'll see a spot to register for the nightly newsletter mailing list. I do not post the full version of this newsletter on our YouTube channel, so make sure you register for our nightly newsletter mailing list. That way you never miss another newsletter video. Next up, right below the video tonight, you'll see a spot to download all the charts you see me using in tonight's video. You can download those right below the video on our blog. Over on the right-hand side, you can register as a trial member, learn more about membership, and of course, we almost always have someone standing by here 24-7-365. It looks like I need to reset the chat server. But typically, though, you'll be able to reach somebody there during business hours, right, if you have any questions along the way. Now, Let's get started tonight with this schedule for tomorrow. Looking at tomorrow's schedule, we have options expiration Friday. Now, for pretty much everybody besides the E-mini S&P, this won't mean very much. Every, every month, the third Friday of every one month, that is manana. Tomorrow, we have the options expiration Friday. Now, shouldn't be a big deal for crude, shouldn't be a big deal for the euro, and it shouldn't be a big deal for the gold, but the E-mini S&P, we do expect that to be a little bit sluggish. There may be a little bit of analysis paralysis, a little bit of a self-filling prophecy ahead of uh, OPEX Friday. Overall, though, I just want you to be aware it's happening. I don't worry about it too much. If it's a little bit slow, it's going to be a Friday, right? Tomorrow's a Friday. It's OPEX Friday. There's going to be a little bit lower volume. It's it's a Friday, so it's always going to be a little bit lower volume than we typically see. Again, I don't expect any markets other than the S&P to really see any dramatic slowdown because of this. And since the S&P has been kind of uh, lockstep with crude oil the past few months, we probably won't even notice tomorrow is OPEX Friday. But again, be aware, the third Friday of every one month, unless the first day of the month obviously is a Friday, right? You can count tomorrow as going to be options expiration Friday. Now, with that said, expecting Friday, no matter what Friday it is, to be a little bit lower volume. And that always means get in early and get out early. My rule of thumb for Friday mornings is, I will enter into new trades no later than 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday morning. It's okay to hold positions into the afternoon session, but be very, very weary of trading after noon on Friday. The reason why, as the day gets later, as the week gets older, traders who are trying to hit their numbers will start taking bigger risks. You have to remember, at the end of the week, 
right? This is also even more important at the end of the month and at the end of the quarter, right? But at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, at the end of the year, traders take bigger risks. And for a new trader, that means you're going to see a lot more unexpected movement. And because it's the end of the week, the volume will be a little bit lower. It's a recipe for disaster. So my rule of thumb on Fridays, get in early, get out early. Tomorrow morning, we have an 830 CPI number tomorrow morning. That's our really our only major news. We've got some minor news coming out in Europe in the overnight session around 4.30 a.m. But for the U.S. traders tomorrow, 8.30 a.m., that's going to be your only time to sit on hands, five minutes before, five minutes after. And then again, my cutoff tomorrow morning will be 11 a.m. I'm more than welcome to leave open positions into the close tomorrow. Never leave those positions open over the weekend, right? We're not swing traders. We're day traders here. So we'll finish things up tomorrow about 11 o'clock Eastern time leave some open positions if you need to right but protect your capital on Friday afternoon it's not the time to be getting back into new trades tomorrow now you get the plan for tomorrow now let's jump into our charts starting off tonight on crude oil crude oil is bearish and trading at the lows of the channel this evening which tells us to wait for rotation back to the channel highs before looking for the next round of selling opportunities tomorrow we have an unfilled gap overhead at 33.37. That will be an easy target for the buyers up near channel highs and a measured move for the long-term target back down. Buyers want to see the sellers fail on this next pullback at the moving average, right? Then make a new higher high and hold the next pullback to have confidence buying off these lows. But they need to act quickly because the highs of the channel is where the sellers will likely be re-entering the market tomorrow. Looking at this chart right now, we can easily see we have a bearish trending market. Lower lows, lower highs. We have, in my opinion, there are two, eh, maybe three main components. The first main component is an unproven long-term bear channel. I say this is unproven because you'll notice we haven't seen rotation, right? Remember, remember channel rotation? We talk about this all the time. Rotation. We go from the low up to the high, down to the low. We should have gone up to the high, right? Well, we didn't get it all the way to the high. So that, that failed rotation right there, that failed rotation tells us this is probably the second piece of this puzzle. It's probably a spike in channel, right? So it, it doesn't really matter which option you choose. It's either a larger bear channel or a more short-term spike in channel. Both of those tell us direction, and both of those tell us to expect a correction higher before we look for selling opportunities back lower, okay? The third piece of this puzzle is going to be that gap, right? There's a very important gap, right? And if you look closely, that gap lines up right after that news came out. Remember, remember that news came out this morning? We slammed down, double-bottomed, trapped high, and then collapse back lower. We talked about this in the trade room this morning after we watched the morning finish up. We said, look for a trap high before they finish that job back down. Well, that trap high, you can guarantee there's a bunch of sellers in there who will still have their stops floating a few ticks above that high, right? That gap, sorry for, the, sorry for the white out there, that gap is going to be a tasty target. New higher high, hold the pullback, right, for the buyers to try to fill that gap. But again, they got to be careful. If you want to be a bull right now, you've got to get to it quick because you're going to run into all this resistance overhead. The final piece of this puzzle, we got a couple options for a measured move. If we happen to collapse here overnight, we have a short-term measured move down around 31.89. You'll notice how there's a couple different options for the measured move. What will be the more reliable measured move is after a bullish correction, A to B, right? B to C. It's difficult to tell where that C point will be. It'll be up around the highs of that channel, right? It'll be up around these resistance areas overhead, right? So A to B, up to C. We don't really know where that C point will be, but once we get up around C, then we'll know more about how far that measured move is going to be. It's a very simple goal. Very, very simple goal. Luckily, I'm not an English teacher. It's a very simple A, B equals C, D symmetrical projection on the way back down. And then we have a major swing low down there at 3171. So 3171, 32 area, that looks like a tasty target. But again, the most reliable trades for the sellers are going to be coming in after we make a new lower low. 
Let's play that game real quickly here. What if price goes higher? What if price goes lower? First of all, if price goes lower right now, we are at the low of that range, the low of that channel. It's very unreliable selling low. Remember the old saying, buy low, sell high, right? I know I repeat that over and over again, but it holds true. So if price goes lower, be very careful about selling. If anything, you want to be looking for a buying opportunity here. It will be aggressive, right, into those seller failures to buy off that low. This is a bearish market, so if you choose to buy this market right now, wear your helmet, wear your seatbelt. Most importantly, treat it as a scalp until proven otherwise if you're going to buy this market right now if it goes lower, right? So if it goes lower, be very careful selling it. If it goes lower, what I'm looking for is, is a spike higher, failure for the buyers. That way I can sell without selling right into the low. Just don't sell into the low, right? If it goes lower... Buyers will look for seller failure to buy that low. Sellers will look for buyer failure after a snap higher, right, to sell it back down to that to that measured move. What if it goes higher? If it goes higher here, you have to assume there are going to be what I call residual sellers. That is the sellers who don't know any better, right? The sellers who see this as a bullet, this is a bearish market, and we undoubtedly will expect to see sellers try to sell that moving average. The buyers are going to be waiting for that to fail, and that will ultimately be their first somewhat reliable opportunity. It's difficult to say the word buy and reliable in the same sentence in a bearish market, but that will be the first opportunity to be a buyer. What the buyers really want to see, though, if this goes higher, is they want to see this market make a new higher high, pull back, and hold that moving average on the first pullback. That will tell all the sellers back off and it will tell all the buyers now you've got the pardon the pun the green light right or put the foot on the gas pedal and now we can send this price back higher but again don't expect it to go too far we got that gap to fill overhead around 3340 and then we're going to have a couple different options up here it's impossible for me to know exactly where that how high that correction will go but the overall idea is is get back to the high of that channel Right, get back to the high of that channel, get back into this area. You know, if I had to guess this area between that 3360 area, the gap fill, right, that's going to be the ideal correction zone. We get up there, now we're looking for buyers to fail, sellers will sell into their stop losses. If you don't want to take the failure setup, look for the continuation. Continuations will lead into strength. And of course, the target is right back down to that low, and then keep an eye out for a major measured move. That's the type of target you'll leave, you'll, you'll leave as a runner tomorrow afternoon, right? So if we get into this trade middle to late morning, target back at the low, target the measured move, and again, we don't know where that final target will be for that measured move. Don't forget, don't forget, we open the trade room tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Come out and join us. We'll be trading this market, among many others, live in real time. Next up here, moving from the crude to its twin brother here, twin sister, right, the S&P 500. We have been seeing remarkable correlations between these two. Now, a lot of people, remember, don't confuse correlation with causation. Okay, just because the markets appear to be moving somewhat consistently together, it's still very difficult to tell which is causing the other, right? There's a big, there's a big difference between correlation and causation. I get this question quite a bit. Is there a correlation between certain markets? Of course there is, but the reality is, is the advantage of that is, is very small and it's always changing. It'll take you a lifetime to be, able to, to be able to figure out how to predict or anticipate the causation. That's the key. So bottom line, we almost expect at this point the S&P to follow suit to crude oil, right, or vice versa. You tell me. I don't know. And I really don't care which is causing the other. All I need to worry about is what's on this chart. The mini S&P is bearish with a spike in channel and a trading range this evening, which tells us to look for bull traps at the highs of the range and the highs of the channel for the most reliable trades tomorrow. Both the spike in channel and the trading range tell us to look for a correction up around 1922 to 1925.